What is up guys and welcome back to the channel where today we're continuing where we left off last week and we're talking about Star Wars games that were released on every PlayStation. Today's episode is going to be about the PlayStation 2 and as you can see I actually have games for the PlayStation 2 so I can actually give a little bit of experiences on the games that I have played. Now a lot of these games are also available on PlayStation Plus or on your modern systems through remasters or such and such. Um, if they are available on PlayStation Plus, I will again put the PlayStation Plus logo in the top right corner for your convenience. We'll also be posting the uh, Metacritic scores along with the price charting prices um, in dollars, just as that is more convenient for everyone. So if you are ready for that, let's hop straight into the video. Kicking off the next generation of Star Wars games on the PS2, we start with Star Wars Starfighter. This was released in 2001, will cost you around $6 if you want a physical copy, and rated really high on Metacritic with an 84. This seems like the perfect game to get into, and it spawned a direct sequel that is also equally as awesome. After that, also in 2001, Super Bombad Racing came out for the PS2. Now this is like a Mario Kart, just Star Wars. Scoring a 71 and costing around $6, this is a pretty average game. The sequel to 2001 Star Wars Starfighter, Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, came out in 2002. Now while it didn't quite reach the same acclaim as Starfighter, it still scored a very respectable 81 on Metacritic and will cost you around $4 if you wanted to go purchase this game now on PlayStation 2. Tying in with the release of Attack of the Clones, in 2002 we saw the release of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now this game scored a 72 on Metacritic and will cost you around $14, so this is on the pricier side for PS2 Star Wars games. However, this game looks fantastic, I would love to try this out at some stage. Star Wars Racer Revenge, released in 2002 on the PlayStation 2, scored a 73 on Metacritic and is now worth around $10 according to price charting. This is a game that is now available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 through backwards compatibility and is still a lot of fun to play, however I don't think it's the best pod racing game on PlayStation. 2002 was clearly a very busy year for PlayStation 2 and Star Wars, because it also saw the release of Star Wars Bounty Hunt. Now, this game is rated at a 65 on Metacritic and goes for around $8 according to price charting. And for me, I think this game is probably one of the best games on PlayStation 2 with the Star Wars franchise. I love this game and I think a lot of people should play it. I personally enjoy it on PlayStation 4, so this game is available on PlayStation Plus for all of you that have the um, Deluxe or Premium Edition. Very rarely is it that a fan base can say one game perfectly epitomizes everything a franchise should be. Now, Star Wars Battlefront released in 2004 and its sequel that was released in 2005 pretty much are the closest I think any Star Wars fans can get on saying this is the perfect Star Wars game. And I kind of just wish we had a better re-release than the collection and hopefully that the collection update that is now on PS4 and PS5 does eventually get fixed because these are fantastic games that everyone should play. As we just said, Battlefront and its follower Battlefront 2 which was released in 2005 are pretty much the perfect Star Wars games and Battlefront 2 basically just took everything that Star Wars Battlefront 1 did right and further extended it adding in new things that the fans love. I love both these games and I think that once the collection is perfect conditioned or perfectly in condition, everyone should hop in and we should all have an amazing time with these new old games. To tie in with the release of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, the tie-in game was released in 2005. Now this game is not rated particularly well, in fact it's the worst rated PS2 game um, in the Star Wars franchise at a 60 on Metacritic and you can get it for as cheap as $6. However, I think this game has a very fun ending Easter egg that I'm not going to spoil here other than I think you guys should go check it out. I don't think this is a particularly bad game. I think it should be enjoyed as a movie tie-in game. Easily one of the most beloved franchises within the Star Wars franchise is the Lego Star Wars franchise and it's easy to see why. 
these games hardly ever miss. I don't think I can think of one off the top of my head that was particularly bad. I think each of them have their own unique charm and this is the first one. It picked kicked off with the prequel trilogy and I loved it. I think everyone did and I think there's so much nostalgia for these games that we would still play them today if we had a modern re-release of them. I mean, it's not even too bad to go back to the original PS2 version, so why would we not? The follow-up to what is pretty much perfection went back to the perfect trilogy. Now for Star Wars we've had three trilogies and while the prequels are great I think that the original trilogy is unanimously accepted as the best Star Wars trilogy. So what did LEGO do when they had success with their original LEGO Star Wars game? They went back and redid the original three movies and I don't think it could have turned out any better than it did. The next game and final game on PlayStation 2 in the Star Wars franchise is The Force Unleashed. Now this is a game that has mixed feelings around Star Wars community I feel. It's a game that I've never played but have heard something interesting about it. The game that was released on PS2, PSP and PS3 are not all the same. Each have different levels and while the story might be similarly poised, everything has each version of the game, I should say, has something unique about them, making me want to play all three of them all the more. Which one do you think I should start with and which one do you prefer as your favorite version of The Force Unleashed? That brings the Star Wars franchise on PlayStation 2 to an end. Now, if you want to carry on seeing videos like this, you're going to have to smash that like button, make sure you view this video and make sure you share it and maybe potentially hit the bell notification to see that I am going to be doing further videos. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the previous week's episode on the PlayStation 1 games released on, well, Star Wars games released on PlayStation 1. I love the PlayStation 2 and I love Star Wars. I think it's probably one of my favorite consoles ever and definitely one of my favorite franchises ever. And having both of them together is truly a recipe for greatness. Um, I love the games on that that have been presented to us. I would love to know what your guys' favorite Star Wars games are on the PlayStation 2. And let me know if there's anything that I missed out on, anything that you would like to add to the video in the comments. Um, I'll pin some of the most interesting facts that I that you guys post when it comes to Star Wars games on PlayStation 2. One that really struck me as unique was the fact that the Force Unleashed um, that was released on PlayStation 2, PSP and PS3 aren't all exactly the same. And I think I was expecting that the PlayStation 2 version would probably be the worst one. However, from what I've heard that some of the levels in the PlayStation 2 version are some of the best levels that the game has. So. Any interesting facts like that that you have for me, I would love to hear about in the comments below. Make sure you also subscribe and like the video and hit the bell notification just in case you're scared you're going to miss one of my videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and that you are playing some amazing Star Wars games this May, the Star Wars month in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure everyone's opinion. <laughs> but anyways, enjoy some Star Wars games this weekend and I'll check you in the next video.